Thank you so much, Mr. Duncan, and good afternoon, everyone. It is truly my honor to be here to express my gratitude on behalf of the City of Chicago for your hard work. The hard work that each of you do every single day to make our city much safer. Seeing us gathered here today committed to this work makes me all the more hopeful that a better, stronger, safer future is achievable. You know, earlier this month I had the chance to speak at the U.S. Conference of Mayors in Washington, D.C. And I told them about our efforts to reduce and prevent violence. And one of the strategies I highlighted was the incredible work in community violence intervention. And while Chicago is not the only city with community violence intervention programming, we are unique in the extent of which different sectors of our city, nonprofits, philanthropic community, the business community, government, and community-based organizations, we're all coming together to support this critical work. Chicago is leading the way in showing the country what it looks like to invest in people, particularly those with lived experiences in order to reduce violence and support those who are harmed and those who cause the harm. In our great city, everyone, especially the communities most impacted, you get a seat at the table. In the spirit of collaboration, in December, I announced the People's Plan for Community Safety, my administration's commitment to a people-place-based approach to addressing the root causes of harm and violence. One of the nine pillars in this plan is investing in and expanding CVI and coordination among sectors throughout the city of Chicago because we know that government alone cannot make Chicago safer. The People's Plan, it seeks to unite the many groups who have been doing the work, been doing the work to reduce violence in our city and all of those who call Chicago home to produce a vibrant and a more thriving city. We can do that together. We are committed to working together with community members and community organizations and philanthropy and business and more to unite action to enact solutions. Our challenges with community violence didn't appear overnight and they won't resolve overnight. But all of us have to dig deep and continue to make sure that every single child has an opportunity to grow up in a thriving neighborhood. Long-term investment and layered investments, we will make sure that communities are safe today and for generations to come. It is a matter of life and death. And to that end, I want to thank Metropolitan Peace Initiative, PSPC, the Civic Committee of the Commercial Club of Chicago, Chicago Cred, for their commitment and investments that will grow and scale up this promising field. We know that success comes from breaking down silos and taking a holistic approach to these very complex problems. But I look forward to working together to see this room. I'll be very honest and be vulnerable with you. To be in this room, to see so many brothers in this room, so many black men in this room standing up for their community. I don't care what anybody says about Chicago. I know that black men love this city. and the same policies that have created and caused the type of devastation that we've experienced. We are pulling ourselves together to address the root causes of violence, and we're doing it together. So let's know that it's possible. We know that Chicago can be a better, stronger, safer place because of the people in this room. It is truly my honor, and I'm deeply humbled to represent the greatest freaking city in the world, the city of Chicago. God bless you, and God bless the city of Chicago. What an honor it is to be here with my heroes standing in front of me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to all of you on the front lines, thank you. It is still morning. Wait, I'm going to look to make sure. Yeah, no. Good afternoon, everyone. I really am honored to be here at the South Shore Cultural Center alongside all these distinguished leaders here on stage. I won't repeat their names, but there are a few people I want to make sure that you recognize or that I recognize and you'll recognize them. Our DHS Assistant Secretary of the Office of Firearm Violence Prevention, Kiwana Bell.
Of course, you've met some of the business leaders here, but there are many in the audience today who have put their dollars forward and their hard work forward to make sure that this program is successful. And of course, the many, many representatives of communities across this city, thank you for your dedication. Before I became governor, my predecessor defunded CVI all across Illinois. Many of the programs were simply downsized or closed their doors altogether. To no one's surprise, what followed was the fastest rise in violent crime in decades. And a Northwestern University study released in 2022 proved the correlation. We have lost too many people and too many children because of the damage that was done. It is time to rebuild. It is past time that we rebuild. As governor, there is nothing more important to me than keeping Illinoisans safe. So my administration has been working to reverse the hollowing out of government support for violence intervention. And I've taken a holistic approach towards realizing a vision of a safer city of Chicago and a safer state of Illinois. Over the last three years, the General Assembly, the Senate President, the Speaker, you heard Justin Slaughter, you heard Robert Peters, I mean, together we have worked to do so many things that I think are making a difference today and will in the future. Let me start with the ban on the sale of assault weapons in Illinois. And we banned ghost guns and we banned rapid fire switches. And we ended the sale of high-capacity magazines. We instituted universal background checks on all gun purchasers, and we increased the duration of our red flag laws. But you all know that limiting the implements of violence isn't nearly enough. Until last September, in Chicago and across the state, violent offenders who had enough bail money were immediately set free, while poor people accused of nonviolent crimes would have to sit in jail for months because they didn't have a few hundred or a few thousand dollars for bail. That's unfair, that's unjust, so we ended cash bail. And then we enacted the Reimagined Public Safety Act, surging unprecedented levels of investment in violence prevention and interruption, and utilized data to inform where help is most needed. And we increased mental health and substance use treatment to new highs and high levels all across the state of Illinois. Then I established the first ever State Office of Firearm Violence Prevention, now, communities have a dedicated state resource for technical assistance, for training, policy recommendations, while we provide investments to fuel the work. And our approach is working because it's your approach. We are proud to celebrate two years in a row of double-digit declines in shootings in Chicago, a feat that was once thought impossible. And with this announcement today, SC2, we are bound to make even more progress, saving countless lives. SC2 will carry this work much further. Scaling community violence intervention for a safer Chicago is an unprecedented effort to gather government, stakeholders, and community organizations, private stakeholders, to meet the needs of those most at risk of gun violence. This has been years in the making, and no other city or state in the nation has a partnership as robust as this one, and I thank you for making that happen. To the people who do the work on the ground every single day, to the members of the SC2 Steering Committee and representatives from Chicago's CVI groups, I want to express my unending gratitude to you. Your dedication will bring about a safer, brighter tomorrow for Chicago, and I couldn't be prouder to stand alongside you in that endeavor. Thank you.